Hey all, Zook here with the All Bosses No Damage route for Scholar of the First Sin. Um, this time we'll be taking on two of the optional bosses, the Executioner Chariot and the Belfry Gargoyles. So we'll start up by going to the Bridge Approach in Huntsman's Cups, and we'll run through similar to how we did before, staying on the left so that the club guy doesn't jump down. Uh, killing these two hollows and then this time we are going to kill one more enemy we're going to look at this torturer up on the hill and we're going to shoot him he'll take two arrows and then after killing this artificial undead we'll also actually not even bother shooting that poison butterfly we'll just kind of cut over to the right here and then head up this path and we have five torturers that we have to kill before we cross over the bridge um, the torturers if you aim correctly get a headshot and one more should actually kill them in two hits and if you can aim it try to get them before they land on the ground um, these enemies especially are kind of like mini Alan knights where they are very quick and actually even worse than when you're fighting the Alan knights because you fight these ones in darkness um, you can't really lock on to them until they're really close to you so just to make your life easier try to do like i just did with that fourth torture where i was able to snipe it before it even landed on the ground But then we're going to come up to the bridge here, and there's going to be two hollows hanging off of the bridge. You can either kill them like I do as you're running forward, or when we stop up here in just a second to poison this red phantom, um, before you shoot the red phantom at all, you would want to turn around and both of these hollows would be climbing up onto the bridge where you could then shoot them. But once the hollows are taken care of and you're up here, Poison this dude. And then you should be safe to go into the boss fight. There's a fire seed right there if you're choosing to go pyromancy routes. And you'll see me do okay for the first section of this boss fight. And then I mess up in the middle half. So I'm going to cast Yearn after hiding in the alcove. Um, I do spawn the skeletons by running up to the first alcove. And then cast urn again. And then I'm going to run up to the third alcove on the left. And kill this necromancer. And then I'm going to cast urn. And what I should do, so this alcove on the right, right now, that has that skeleton in it. I should have gone into that alcove and killed the skeleton. For some reason, I thought that this alcove that I just tried to roll into, I thought that it was empty. Um, it wasn't. So, if you want the safe alcove to go into, do that one that I mentioned. Otherwise, we're just going to kind of continue casting yarn behind us and then waiting for the chariot to run past um, when you get to the very final alcove on the right side which is coming up there is going to be this necromancer so you kill her and with the two necromancers gone all these skeletons should be dying um, as they get killed by the chariot so I continue to cast urine behind me until I know that they're dead. And at this point, as I'm getting these souls, I'm like, okay, they should be dead. So technically, you can time this that so you get three arrow shots in. Just because I'm going to poison this guy and I'm doing um, 
six total shots, I just figure I'll do three rounds of two arrows as opposed to two rounds of three arrows. Um, especially because then I let the poison tick a little bit more. So that fourth arrow just poisoned. And then I'm going to shoot these two arrows. And dark is actually the element that does the least amount of damage to this enemy. So I should have used magic or lightning arrows. But after I shoot the sixth arrow, I will pull down the gate. Dual wield the rapier. And then let the gate damage it a little bit. And four hits should do the trick. Nothing too difficult here. Um, just make sure that you're kind of being careful as you run up. That you should have enough casts of urine that you don't really have to try to save any of them. So. Then we homeward back here and I'm going to burn this bonfire ascetic because we're going to try to use soul spear on Alana. Um, I've found that this sorcery route that you'll end up seeing in about four or five videos from now, um, because sorcery tends to work the best with her, that's why I'm stacking up these soul spears. So we're going to shoot these guys. And I'm going to go grab this soul spear the exact same way that I did um, grabbing the first soul spear. If you remember back in the video with the skeleton lords, I think video 10 or 11. Where I'm going to kill all of these enemies, including the torch hollow, who does actually see me this time. And then we come up here, and technically you have to kill this bandit on the roof that we're about to drop to. And then you also have to kill the bandit with the dog. Um, and then the dog, because the dog aggros when you attack his master. But I don't believe that you actually have to kill these two other bandits. I still do kill this one on the roof. Um... Again, the roof one was optional. This one, I believe, is mandatory along with the dog. And then the one that's hiding behind this rock on our left, I believe isn't necessary, but just in case, I kill him anyways. And then we're going to cast Fall Control. And if I had remembered to equip Shockwave, um, if I had that spell attuned, then this would have been a much easier Cyan Soldier kill. Um, it's still not going to take forever, just because after getting in the one free shot, I'm going to equip Dung Pies. And as long as I back up a little bit so that the angle is a little bit better. Uh, the Dung Pie should start hitting right now. And, I mean, if you do fall off the hut, then just go back on it the same way as you had. Because it's not like you have any enemies that would aggro to you. Then I pick up this Soul Spear. And, again, if you're wanting green blossoms to use in the Frigid Outskirts, you might want to grab the one that is also on the ground behind you. But otherwise, we just come on back and rest at the bonfire. And at this point, I actually do things a little bit out of order. Um, what I should be doing here is going to the Royal Army campsite in Seldora to grab the Staff of Wisdom. Because, so I remember right here that I want to infuse the Old Knight Hammer but I also want to infuse the Staff of Wisdom, so it would just save a trip to McDuff if I had the Staff of Wisdom at this point. But as I'm right here, I'm going to equip the Throwing Knives because those will be crucial for my strategy against the Gargoyles. And then again, I take the Old Knight Hammer. I'm going to infuse this with Raw. 
And then I'm looking for the staff and I'm like, oh yeah. So I go to the Royal Campsite, that first bonfire in Sildora. And then there's going to be three falconer archers that I want to take down. The first one is actually not the one that I'm aiming at right now. It is this one. It is kind of parallel to that pathway that leads up to the well. Um, by shooting any of the archers, all it's both of these archers up on the uh, trellises are going to aggro to you. So that's why I shoot the one first where um, I can hide behind the tent from the second archer that's aggroed to me. But you're just going to kind of play peekaboo with him. And while he's reloading his shots, then you can poke out and shoot him. And then we do have a third falconer archer that is up on that pathway that we'll use to drop down to the well. And now we kill this miner and then cast fall control. And then I'm also going to make sure that I have yearn attuned right now because I'm about to cast yearn to distract the boar. Um, I actually mess up the first time getting into the well and you got to be careful about messing up here because the falconers and the boars can both um, aggro to you and while the boars can be um, distracted by yearn the falconers cannot. So I get into the well by just kind of sprinting into it and then I cast yearn behind me and then I try to roll past the boar, but it doesn't work, so I just take out my rapier and poke it. Climb up the ladder. And then use this Lloyd Talisman on the Mimic. At this point with your stats, you can, I'm pretty sure, three-shot it with a rapier. So it's not that you need the Lloyd Talisman, but I use it just to be extra cautious. And then, yeah, we're going to go back to Macduff and infuse this staff with the Faint Stone so that it gets extra magic damage. And we'll also upgrade to plus five since we have our Twinkling Titanite. If you're still short on tit Titanite, uh, the Twinkling Titanite, there should be one extra Twinkling Titanite in this chest behind Macduff. So now everything that I want to infuse has been infused. Meaning we can come to the servants' quarters, and we aren't going to need yearn. So we take off our two yearns and put on dark fog. I put on the hexer's hood, so we have this extra cast. Um, not that we necessarily need it here. But in a worst case scenario, the gargoyles can actually be poisoned. So if you, for whatever reason, end up getting to a point where you're stuck with two gargoyles towards the very end um, and you want to cast Dark Fog, if you get into a point just because it can be very scary to try to use the Old Knight Hammer when there's two gargoyles after you, um, we do have these extra casts of Dark Fog just in case we try to use that. But then I use the Rapier to get rid of these little dwarves. I found that if you have the old knight hammer equipped already, um, that weapon tends to be pretty unwieldy as you're turning corners. And just because we're going to be turning corners to try to get to these little bell keepers, um, I try to use the rapier. And 
Then we're going to climb up the ladder. Now, this is after casting another fall control, because we're going to have to make a big drop in just a second. We climb up the ladder just to the top, but we don't get off of it. And we punch up, and now those bell keepers are aggroed to us. I give them both a second to come over. And then I cast Dark Fog. And then right now I'm watching out to make sure that neither of them drops down. I've had it happen before. So make sure that they don't accidentally drop down on you. Wait back here, have the bow out. But as soon as you see them almost dead, then you can run back over here to the ladder and climb back up it. The third bell keeper that's just standing over there shouldn't be aggroed to you. Um, even if the bell keeper invader invades your world, which I think happens if you're offline. Um, even if that bell keeper invades your world, I mean, Dark Fog takes care of it just the same. So we're going to take out the Old Knight Hammer. We're going to use Aromatic Ooze on it. And then I'm going to make sure that the throwing knives are first up. Because this whole entire pattern, since I'm not wasting a Bright Bug, I want to throw a throwing knife to do just a little bit of damage. And then it'll take a two-handed R2 to kill these Gargoyles. Um, if you use a Bright Bug, then you don't have to preface any of these Gargoyles with a throwing knife or one-handed crossbow bolt or any other consumable. Um, you'll notice that it is a little bit sketchy getting that first throwing knife in. Um, I'm still kind of new at using this strat, so I panic a little bit and get hit right there, as you can see. But again, it's honestly, you might not even need to throw it from far away. Just as soon as you can lock on, lock on. Take a second to throw the throwing knife after they've done their first attack, and then smush them with the hammer. Um, there isn't really a huge rush in here. It seems like there should be, but as long as you know what you're doing, it's not going to be terrible. Or alternatively, you can just use a bright bug if you have the extra ones and not even have to worry about the throwing knives. But there is no, as far as I've found, there is no combination of stats that actually lets you do enough damage to one-shot the gargoyles. Um, with the raw hammer, it does stay constantly at like 1290-something. Um, and even if you infuse it with like magic or enchanted or anything like that and raise up your intelligence stat to try to get bonus magic damage, I still wasn't able to get it to work. So... Now from here, we are just going to open up the third DLC, and we're actually going to spend the next video just running through the third DLC. Um, we're going to kill Ava and grab several of the bonfires, free two of the Lois Knights that we want to fight with us against the Ivory King. Um, all that's going to be happening in this next episode before we take on the Throne of Want and finish up the main game. So as you're running through here, just do the exact same strats that we had before, right? Just shooting these Falconers. You don't need the Twinkling Titanite that you already picked up. So we just come over here, cast Yearn. And then because the Shrine of Winter is already open, I just kind of run around to the far side of it. Just in case somebody's followed me up, I want them to also have to run all the way the long way around it so they don't um, knock me out of this animation of entering the Shrine of Winter. But now that we're here, we'll just open up this door and rest at the bonfire. And again, next one is going to be all just going through this area and... Finishing up by getting all the bonfires that we need and all the Lois Knights that we're going to need. So I will catch you in the next one.